Welcome to the Reality in Life Church. We are happy that you are worshiping with us today. We know that you will be blessed by the service. Please come again. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come in the name of Jesus today, we just thank you and bless you and praise you for who you are and what you are. Father, we ask in Jesus' name that you bless your people today. The word goes, we thank you that the word goes forth unhindered, uninterrupted. In the name of Jesus, no satanic interference. Every heart is ready to receive the word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. We do honor and praise God for you being here today. We thank mm -hmm. and praise God for your presence. And we pray that uh, that uh, things will go well for you. Um, I stated just a few minutes ago, never get satisfied where you are. Or never be satisfied where you are. Always try to make improvement and progress. That is a tool of excellence where you always try to do better, attempt to do better. You, 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 you make up your mind that you're not going to be satisfied and get comfortable where you are. Like you've talked out, like you've already had no, no need to move forward or progress anymore. No, never be satisfied, Caleb May. <laughs> as being where you are. God always has more in store for you and every person. Okay? So never be satisfied where you are. Never get comfortable and, uh, and just content. You don't want to do anymore. There's a scripture there in Psalms. Uh, I'll read it before you real quickly. This is not my message. My message today will be about faith. Uh, what it is, how it works. Will it work for you? For every believer, Jesus never would have put this in the book of Hebrews if he didn't mean for it to work. And this is Hebrews 11, I believe in 6. So then, you know, Hebrews 11, 1 says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing is by the word of God. And that is out of our mouth as we hear someone else speak it or we hear ourselves speak it. Okay? And so that being said, um, Hebrews 11 and 6 says this, For without faith it is impossible impossible to please God. So in order to please God, your faith must be developed. It must grow in order to please God. And again, the promises, and I said this last Sunday, the promises of God are received by faith and they're governed by principles. So don't think for one minute at all. Do not think for one minute that just because you are saved and you're born again, you're a believer, you confess your hope in Christ, that, that the will of God just happened automatically. No, it's going to require a, 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 a intentional effort. It's going to require intentional effort on your part to make or cause the will of God to come to pass in your life. Because the promises of God are received by faith and they're governed by principles. And if you, if you teach the principles, it'll work for you every time. If you work the principles, they will work for you every time without the aid, support, and the assistance of others. The principles will work. Now, God uses other people, but I'm telling you, these principles will work. Just don't work for the preacher. It'll work for you also. Okay? So that's what I'm interested in your well-being and how you can uh, accomplish what it is God wants you to accomplish. Okay? So without faith, it's impossible to please God. You can please God by, by standing in faith. That don't mean you're not going to have any problems, challenges. I call them degrees of challenges. That don't mean, you won't, that don't mean you're not going to have any, any, any other things that you have to deal with. But I'm telling you, you can overcome. You can overcome. All right. So we thank and praise God for you today. Um, we welcome you to the Reality in Life Church today. We're located at 1444 East Chevy Drive here in the city of Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, our service time is at 11 o'clock on Sundays and Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We do appreciate God for all the viewers, the ones that's listening uh, to our voice. And uh, we thank and praise God for the opportunity to stand before you and share the word. Uh, this is a great occasion and we're, we're, gonna, we're not going to take this lightly uh, to be able to stand before the people of God. I, it's, not, it's not that we just want to be seen. I'm, I'm not an individual who just want to be seen. I just want to be heard. 
I want people that God has already purposed for them to hear me to, to be in the place and position for them to hear, okay? So I thank you for God, and I take my job uh, very serious, and uh, I hope you take yours very serious, the things that you're doing for the Lord, okay? So we thank you, praise God, for all of you again, and uh, we're going to go into the Word of God. We're going to discover some things uh, that God has in store for us, and, and hopefully it makes our job easier. And I learned this years ago. When you learn the test, the test become easier. <laughs> when you learn the test, the test is not as hard. When you study and learn, uh, the test is not as hard. Okay? And uh, so you can learn these things, these principles, and then the test won't be hard. You just walk through because you know God came through the last time. He's going to come through this time. Okay? And he won't fail you. He can't fail you. Now, you're going to meet different uh, different challenges. You're going to meet different uh, uh Occasions, different things that's going to take place different than the last things that you face, but you know you're coming out in it. Okay, now, I don't know how long it's going to last, but if you make up in your mind, you if it takes forever, I'm going to stand. If you make up in your mind, if it takes forever, I'm going to continue to live for God and I'm going to continue to walk in victory. It won't take long. Just make it up in your mind. I ain't quit. I ain't stopped. One of the words that meaning that remaining the same is constant. <coughs> You know, you got to seal in um, S T A N T, and then you got seal in S T E N T. I can one of them is constant and constant. Um, but anyway, one of them is remaining. So one of them, one of them has a definition of being firm, solid. But the other one, S T A N T, it is it is remaining the same, not moving, firm in your purpose, <laughs> resolve. Being a regular, that means you're doing it every, all the time, okay? Not quitting. I believe it's one, one of them also that, say, that it says that. So these are all the definitions that describe that, being constant. And diligence is one of the words. It's, it's continual. It's a continual effort to fulfill your will, God's will, purpose, and plan for your life. Let's say it that way. It's, 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 it's a continual, uh, constant effort. To carry out what God called you to carry out. Okay? That's diligent. And most people don't recognize that. But that's what we we, we do. Uh, Abraham received the promises of God through faith and patience, I believe. Through faith and patience. And I believe in, in Hebrews, the sixth chapter, it tells us, five or sixth chapter, it tells us through faith. Six, uh, turn there with me. When I say turn there, we, like I said, today we're going to talk about faith. I'll give you some definitions. And then we're gonna go over there. Okay. Thank God for you. We love. We love you. Um, Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews eleven and fifteen, right here. Okay. Hebrews eleven and fifteen. It says this. So and so after he had patiently endured, and that's that's another word. You know, most people use that patience is is, is faith. Okay. He had patiently endured. He, he obtained the promise. So there are times you have to stand and keep standing and keep standing and keep standing and remaining and being the same, not changing, refusing, uh, refusing to give up, refusing to quit, refusing to stop, and uh, and it'll come to pass. And uh, you you say say you win by by they, they use they use the terminology because you just won't quit. You just lost it. Okay? So when you learn how when you learn the word of God and you learn to teach from the word of God, you understand, you know, you, it, it becomes easier to communicate. And, and one of the word, one of the definitions that I use, uh, instructive communication. It's very it, when when you give instructive communication, you give thorough, thoroughness. It, it speaks of thoroughness. And you communicate the word of God. That means you, it's, it's almost like dialogue. You know, okay? Um, and so I, I share about the learning process. And most of you all probably know it by heart, the learning process. And the first one is instructions. And uh, instructions always give information and directions. And, I, you know, I share that part. So when you get instructions, you're going to always have it's always going to be in the form of information and direction. Okay? Instruction. Uh, 
And so instruction is a systematic way of teaching. Okay? And whenever you teach them, these, 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 this is what I'm, I don't think I got into this part, but I'm going to, when we teach, it should be with an unusual ability to communicate clarity, number one. Distinction. Everybody's different. I think I said that over there. Everybody's not the same. They're different. Distinction. Effectiveness, <coughs> which will make impact in people's life, okay? Number two, uh, teaching. So teaching, and I gave the illustration of where Jesus was teaching. I mean, teaching will get rid of unbelief. And I have the scriptures. When I say I, I didn't give the scriptures, but teaching is the only thing give it a run. I gave, I quoted it, but I didn't didn't exactly tell you. You know, go go and do. I didn't read it. And you you see when and if you don't anything know anything about when you say for me with the Bible, I just paraphrase it. Uh, there was a there was an instance where Jesus. Y'all probably heard this before. Let's go over it again. There was an instance where Jesus went to his hometown. And they asked, is not this Joseph's son, Mary's son, you know, the son of Joseph, Mary is his mother, and his brothers and his sisters are with us. And the scriptures say, and they were offended. And it says he could do no mighty works there because of their unbelief. Offenses will breed unbelief. Okay? And the only way you can get rid of offenses is, is, is forgiveness, you know, repent or whatever, you know, to that degree. Uh, number two, he could do no mighty works because of their unbelief. If Jesus, if something happened in the scripture where Jesus couldn't do nothing, the next thing he did, he taught you a principle as to what to do. Mark 11, 23, 24, it says, he, he, he showed you, he showed you this. He cursed, the, he cursed the fig tree and the fig tree died. The next day when they was, when they was going into the, when they were going into the city, he cursed a fig tree when he was going into the city the day before. That evening when they came through, they didn't notice no signs of death. In the morning when they came back the next day, Peter brought back to memory, Master, the fig tree which you cursed is dead. Because Jesus went to the fig tree, he wanted fruit. It had leaves, but it had no fruit. Now some people say, that's cruel. I'm, I'm just leaving. I'm just going to quote it just like a quote. I'm not going to get into cruelness and all this. Jesus didn't have no business cursing a fig tree. That's just bad and all, okay. If he did, he did it for a reason, okay. And so Peter brought to memory and said, Master, the fig tree which you curse is dried up at the root. And Jesus taught this principle. Verily, verily, I say unto you. And he taught the principle. See, he's getting ready to give you a principle. Lay a principle out. Have faith in God. Okay, let's translate that on. Turn that around. Have the God kind of faith. The God kind of faith worked this way. If you say unto the mountain, be thy moon, be thy cast into the sea, and shall not die in your heart, but believe those things which you said. Doubt also, that's another word that, that, that I'm going to deal with. Um, and uh, I don't have time to deal with it now, but I'm going to deal with doubt. The way you keep from doubting the word of God, and you know when Jesus came, was up on the mountain, these are two synonymous things. And his disciples came, he came down, his disciples were dealing with the young man's son. And he couldn't cast him out. And Jesus, and, and the man brought his son to Jesus and said, your disciples tried to cast him, tried to heal, help my son, he couldn't help him. And Jesus said, bring him hither. Peter, James, and John was up there with Jesus. But the other disciples were down there dealing with the man's son. And Jesus brought the boy, they brought the boy to Jesus and Jesus rebuked that foul spirit and he came out of him. Make long search short. There's some other things that happen. He threw him down, tear and tried to act like he wasn't coming out. So when you cast the devil out of a person, you don't have to keep standing over him talking about, come out. I said come out. No. When you when you give him command and tell him to do something, that's what he have to do. You don't see what Jesus kept saying. Come out. I told you to come out. No. If he told him to come out once, he went on about his business. Because he knew it was going to work the same way with you. Okay? All right. So when you pray for healing over someone, you decree, thank God for that healing and deliverance. Act like it's done. It happens. Okay? And it will, t it will, and they will recover, one scripture said. They will, sometimes it's instant. 
Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's a process. Okay? But the, uh, and so Jesus brought the young man and cast, cast spirit out of him. And then the disciples came to him privately and said, Master, why come we couldn't cast that demon out? Do you think Jesus left him hanging? If you got a question for Jesus and he put you on hold, then your problem magnified a lot better. You, you see what I'm saying? Jesus never put you on hold with anything. He will teach you a principle. And then he pulled them aside and, and, and said, they said, why come we couldn't cast the spirit out? And he said, because of your unbelief. How be it, this kind only goeth out by, by fasting and prayer. He wasn't talking about the demonic spirit. He was talking about the unbelief goes out by fasting and prayer. And the, the next scripture you hear of what Jesus did he took them on the other side of and he taught them. He didn't leave them in the dark. And he won't leave you in the dark. If you fail it on the test, Jesus will pull you aside and he'll teach you what to do about the test. What the situation, the circumstance, the problem, the condition. In order to, 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 to win or to pass. It. Okay? Um, teaching is this. It's unusual to say, say this when say teaching. Teaching. Is to have an unusual ability to communicate with clarity and distinction, and distinction. <laughs> with, effectiveness, with effectiveness, which will make impact in people's lives. Learning occurs through a process. Occurs through a process by acquiring. Knowledge, knowledge, knowledge and information, and information. <laughs> through observation, through observation. Experience, experience experience no experiment, experiment. And, experience. and experience so I just I'm going to shorten it uh, so, so knowledge is a process of acquiring uh, I mean, learning is a process of acquiring knowledge through observation. You observe through observation, through experiment, and through experience. The, I was sitting down on the couch yesterday, and I believe the Lord said this. Uh, uh, what, Friday or uh, yesterday? Maybe yesterday morning. Listen to this. Joshua 1 and 8. Tell me what this says. The first four, or five, maybe six words. I mean, ten words. And Joshua one and eight. Tell me what that says. He says, "Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything." Careful. In it. Stop right there. That's careful. They 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 use the word careful. What are you learning? Is a process. Of acquiring knowledge and information through observation or of observance. <laughs> Same word. That's for those who revealed to me yesterday. So if you really want to read that, it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate in it day and night. Now they translate that word differently. It means to guard and all that. Observe. That thou may that thou may have uh, meditated in day and night, that thou may have observed, that thou may have learned to do all this good written there. And man, that was, boy, that was, whoa, 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 whoa. that was powerful. Y'all folks may if you want to, but God is trying to teach us something. So learning takes place through observation because if you have knowledge and information. <coughs> through observation, through experiment, and through experience. It also leads to change. Learning always leads to change. Number two, learning produces neatness in your life. Neatness of cares, a neatness of, 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 of getting things in order. Where, you know, where things are not questionable in your life. Okay? All right. Uh, training. I told you those three. Learn, teaching, learning, and training. Training has the... Has, has a specific goal of improving one's capacity. Training will, 
will, will improve your capacity. Training will com improve your capabilities. These are three. I'll probably go them again. Training will improve your productivity, and training will, produce, will improve your performance. Okay? Now, this is what I wanted to, uh, to share uh, about faith. I'm going I'm I'm to mention this. Uh, I'm probably going to add some more to this, but I'm just going to give you this little bit, and hopefully it'll help you. Uh, five elements of faith. Number one is hearing. You must hear the word of God. Number two, believing. I'm working on the believing part, aspects of believing, because when you when you look at uh, the first time believing was used in the Bible, is with Abraham. Abraham believed God. Believing has to, to me now y'all y'all fool around with, with me. Believing has to 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 have more essence or rooting than than what we characterize it as. Have. So just believe God. It, it it has to be more than that to me. It may not be more than that to you, but believing has to be more than that to me. And believing is really an act of your will to to either side with God or you side with circumstances. That's the way most people, you know, write it down. Um, so it's an act of your will to to choose or to decide whether you're going to side with truth or whether you're going to side with facts. Because truth overcomes facts. Now we do use facts in different things, but truth always overcomes facts. It may be a fact that, I'm, that, you know, that your account shows zero balance. But it's a truth that that, that God has given you a bonus. You're, you're following? So which one are you going to side with? It may be a fact that you your body may be, you know, you may have this problem going on. And the doctor diagnosed you with it. But a proof say you are healed by Jesus Christ. Now, is your, and, and, and so your believing is the collection of written documentation. This is one of the definitions that I, that I have. And I say that I, you know, that have been characterized. It's, it's a collection of written documentations, okay? Uh, your believing. Or spiritual truths. So it's a collection of, of the written documentation or the documentation or spiritual truths that we, number one, affirm. That's why I say believing has to be more than just, you know, believe, honey, just believe. Now, if, if Abraham believed God, look and see what he did. <laughs> that would define what he believed. Okay? We know he believed the promises of God. But he didn't have, like I say, when Abraham did this, he didn't have uh, the New Testament. All he had was God out there in the desert. And God was speaking to him. And it says Abraham believed God. Okay? So it's the, it's, it's the written documentation, or it's the documentation, it's collection is the your belief system is the collection of documents or spiritual truth that we number one affirm that we state boldly or that we state in boldness and number two that we assimilate so your belief system is composed of the, the documentation or spiritual truth that we affirm, number one, that we boldly declare or boldly state, and that we assimilate. And assimilation is the absorption of that drug or of that prescribed medication, and it produces a likeness. It's cause as you, you know, it's the cause. So, <clears throat> so five elements of faith is <clears throat> Is hearing, believing, receiving, speaking, and acting. Those are the five elements of faith. See, I never did get to that last Sunday. Oh, don't do that, Silas. See, see, Lord, I really, Kayla, I never did get to that. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Faith 
faith is characterized by nine things. I didn't get to that either. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna even get into that. If you pull me aside, I get. I get into it, but I'm not gonna get into that. Okay. <clears throat> I will say this. Faith is composed of, of two of three things. Number one, knowledge. Faith is composed of three things. Knowledge, what we know. And knowledge is is practical discrimination of what's good and evil, what's wrong and right, what's almost right. See, we get into that area, what's almost right. What's almost right is wrong. I'm just going to tell you. If it always seems like, no, there's a way that seems right, but in the end, it's, it's, it's worth the death. Okay? So you need to know. You don't need to go what seems. You need to go on what you know is right and what you know is wrong. The Holy Ghost will reveal to you what, you know, which road you're traveling down. So I'll give you an illustration. If you, <clears throat> if you plan on going somewhere, you know, with a group or something, and uh, you, you know, when you first make your commitment with the group, maybe a group of people uh, that you work with, you know, because we used to do it, you know, go play basketball, go, you know, go on a trip, you know, uh, a, a two or three day trip. You know, you got some free time and, and the company, you know, is going, you know, going to put you up in a motel, but you know, you got to take care of your own expenses, you know. Your only expense would be your food and stuff. But the company, you know, it's gonna put you up in the motel. You just make the reservations, and they gonna, you, okay. You gotta pay for your gas to get there. So you and fifteen other ones, you know, decide to go on the trip and blah blah blah. And, and so, well, it's gonna be three months up the road, three or four months up the road. Well, at the time you committed to it, you you, you feel comfortable. But getting closer to that date when you are gonna actually make the journey and go. You, you you got this jizzing. You got this jittery feeling. You got this jittery feeling right here. And, and I'm, I'm telling you, I, I've heard testimonies after testimony where this gentleman, he, he, he was supposed to preach overseas. I heard Creflo Dollar make the tell this testimony too. Not only Creflo Dollar, but this, this other gentleman. But he was supposed to go overseas and minister. It's the, what I'm saying, Creflo Dollar was almost the same way. He's supposed to go overseas. I want to get it right if I'm talking about him. And him and the other. But the other gentleman was supposed to go overseas and minister. And he made reservations to go overseas to minister. Had a meeting plan and all that club. Now, <clears throat> about three days before. I say about nine days before he he was he got up that morning and began to meditate. And all of a sudden it's just like he lost his taste or desire to go overseas. Three days before him he to go overseas. Now he didn't have his personal plane. This just, he had, you know, skip. And uh through the airline. And I uh, like like three days before he'd go overseas, the Lord really spoke to him. You know, during these nine days that before, leading up to the three days, he just had this feeling that, that he he didn't want to go overseas. It just changed, you know, just decided not to go. And, you know, he didn't have no reason why, you know, he don't, don't want to go no more, you know. But he he's driven by commitment. You can post her short. Lord really just laid on his heart not to go. So he called and canceled his flight. And the day, the day of when he was supposed to, you know, early in the morning, supposed to leave out and what blah, 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 it came on the news that the plane that he would have been on crashed. Wow. 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 Now, how many other believers that was on that plane that did not respond to the voice of God? God always trying to save his people. Like when the hurricane hit in, in Louisiana years ago, Irma or whatever it was, it was I don't know, whatever it was. And they flooded in Louisiana, and the the uh, uh, there was a pastor friend of mine there in Mississippi. She say one of her pastor friends in Louisiana called her. She was down in prayer, and the Lord spoke to her just as plain and clear as get out of this city. She was praying and told her get your stuff and get out of this city. Do what? He just told her, get your stuff and get out. Of this city. 
And she 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 packed up and the way the Lord spoke, it was like you need to you need to move with, with urgency. And she packed up all us the stuff that she could take and it just left. So it looked like Lord where I'm going. <laughs> I mean you don't know. I mean, now, he'll he'll give you steps, you know. Yeah. But he So anyway, um she packed up her stuff and, and left and went somewhere, Chicago or somewhere. You know, she had some relatives in Chicago. She called them and told them she was coming. And, and two or three days later, it was when the hurricane hit. And she thought to herself, how many other saints did the Lord tell to get out of the city and they didn't, they didn't get out of the city? Mm -hmm. She lost everything. And probably would have lost a life because where she was living, her house was completely submerged on the water. You know, because, you know, when that water, when that living flooded, man, folks was on the roof of their houses. The house floating down the... Come on. There houses flowing down the Mississippi River <laughs> during that time. Because I used to go out there and, man, you see big trees flowing down the river. I was like, man, where did that stuff come from? Debris of houses. You know, the houses tore apart, but you see the remnants of it, okay? Uh, so, the, uh, so faith is composed of three things. Knowledge, what you know about the Word of God. You really have to have an accurate knowledge about the Word of God. You can't be expecting you, you must have working knowledge about the Word of God. Now, I'm not going to go over this anymore, but knowledge, and, and so knowledge is composed, I mean, knowledge is, is practical discrimination of what's good, what's wrong, what's, what's right and wrong, what's good and evil, or what's almost right. Uh, it, 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 it also is intelligent application of what the will of God in each detail of practice. It's intelligent application of what the will of God is for the believer in each detail of practice. To know all that God has promised. We need to know all that God has promised in His Word to us. So it's intelligent application of what the will of God is in each, in each detail of practice. Okay? Knowledge number two, belief. And we go with this belief again. Or believing. And believing is the is the, is the system of is our belief system is the is is the collection <coughs> of documents or spiritual truths that number one we affirm. Okay, you can tell what a person believes; they say it all the time. I, I got a partner friend of mine. He look at the news religiously. I ain't going out at night. You might get killed. In certain places I don't go at night. And I advise you not to go either. Now I ain't going. I'm just not going to be hanging out. Because I already know the track record. What goes on. And blah, 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 blah. And I encourage you to do the same thing. But I'm not going to be governed by that. He say what he believe, you know. Man, it's, it's, this city gets so bad. It is, you know. You know. But uh, you, I'm, you go to the doctor, and the doctor sit there and tell you that you know I don't know what what the, I know you need this, but I don't know what to do. You know I know you need you know surgery, Caleb, but I don't know what to do. You know and he's a specialist. So Caleb, I mean Tyler, you go to the doctor and you sit before the doctor and his staff. And, and all of them just put their hand in their head, just on the desk, and say, we, we don't know what to do. Ain't no need you walking out the office and say, you don't know what to do, agreeing with them. You agree with God. God know what to do about your situation. So you say what you believe. You say it, and if you, you, if you believe it, you're going to say it. That means you're going to affirm it. Number, number two, you're going you're gonna to speak it boldly. That's why I don't speak like, you know, I don't, you know, I don't have enough to pay my life bill. You know, uh-uh, no. You know, I, I'm broke. No. Mm -hmm. If I don't believe, you know, I don't affirm that in my life. And I don't want that. So I encourage you not to. Okay? Let me, let me go on. Uh, what did I say? Knowledge, belief, and trust. I'm dealing with that trust again. So, Faith is composed of three things, knowledge, belief, and trust. Trust is the execution of that word, of that spiritual truth, 
that you will put your weight on. We call it execute. That you will entrust to it for safekeeping. Okay. If you deposit your check, whole check in the mail, okay, man. I mean, in the bank. If you deposit your check in the, your whole check in the bank, and you have intention of doing something next week, you didn't have you didn't have time to do nothing this week, but you're gonna do it all next week. You deposit your check in the mail for safe. That means you entrust it to for safekeeping. Well, that's what trust is. You know, you you do it because there's safekeeping in what God has said. His word is it cannot fail. Okay, actually, you gotta understand this. The covenant we have is the everlasting covenant. Number two, it is an unfailing covenant. And if we're in partnership with Jesus, it's an unfailing partnership. It's an everlasting partnership. That means that the, the partnership that we have with the Lord Jesus can't fail. It can't fail. Okay? All right. Uh, number th number th the other the, the last thing that I have, I got four things. About faith, and I'm gonna go over real fast. I got scriptures to back up, and y'all, we'll, we'll probably go over it again some other time. But there are four things about faith. Number one, faith believes the moment it receives. The moment it, re the moment it, re the mo the moment it, it believes it, it receives it. Okay. Number two. It, faith does not keep asking God for the same thing over and over and over again. I call it a continuation prayer. If I pray for a job today, tomorrow I'm not going to get up and pray for a job. I will continue that prayer. Thanking God that I believe I have received my job. <laughs> That's what I call it. A continuation prayer. It's a continuation. I'm not praying the same prayer over again and over again. Because if you pray it one time and then you pray it again, it's called cancellation. I'm not saying you cancel it out, but I'm just saying it, it will appear that you didn't believe it the first time. Okay. All right. So I call it a continuation. Okay. Continuation prayer. Okay. Um, just like people we've met and, uh, you know, we go down to see them and they ask us to pray for them for a certain thing, whatever. Well, when we go back down there, before we leave, they'll say, pray for us concerning dust. But when we prayed the last time we was here, it's a continuation <coughs> prayer on the prayer that we previously prayed mm -hmm. first. You, you follow? So it's a continuation. We pick up what we left off in. Make, them, make it better than said. So faith, believe the moment you receive. It does not keep asking God over and over and over for the same thing. It, you know... Uh, it, it, it believes the moment it does not keep asking God or praying, you know, for that thing uh, again and again and again because it believes it has received it and if you receive it, it's yours. Okay? Uh, one of the things that God taught me is this. Uh, you thank God, praise God for a car and, uh, and actually, just actually like I saw it and, uh, you know, you thank and praise God, you ask God for a car and you believe you receive a car, a vehicle and blah, blah, blah. And uh, you you walking along, and there's a fence, and that same car is in there, and uh, it's like uh, they they impound it uh, illegal. You impound your car illegal, and you see your car, and you say that's my car. You've been looking for your car, and they don't impound. And and, and, and uh, you say, man, that's my car. That car is not supposed to be on the lot. That is my vehicle. But they did it illegal. So. You pursue every avenue you can to try to get your vehicle back. You know, trying to get your vehicle back. You see your car over there and you're not supposed to be over there. You hear, you see your, your vehicle and it's not supposed to be over there on that line. And so that car is illegally over there and you say, I'm getting my car. Okay? I'm getting my vehicle. Okay? So it does not keep asking God for what it believes it has received. It will be, it will be a continuation of the prayer and believing. Okay, I already said that. It will be a continuation of the prayer and believing. Number three, 
It thanks and praise God every day. It gets up and thanks and praise God that we have received. Hundreds and hundreds of before I, I got it. I'll be much farther up the road. I got it when I got it. And guess what? I had to go back and run my old body and, and find this. Been had it for years. You know, on my old body. But I'm just saying, I wish somebody had a, taught me these principles in the, in the late, late, late 70s. Some of them I did, but I'm just saying, some of this I'm teaching now, I didn't get this to the mid 80s. I've been much, much, much farther up the road. Okay? Number four. So number three, you thank and praise God. You thank and praise God. I don't care what the devil throw at you, what's going, you know, what you're facing. Like I said, uh, had I, had, when the Lord told me not to find my guns, I, I needed $500 to make a house note. I'm going to be late. And I told the Lord, I never want to be late on a house note. And uh, when you make a commitment to God, God will hold. He'll, he'll, he'll come through. He, it may be at the last second, <laughs> last minute. Okay, just like the man Learjet. Yeah, Learjet, I believe. You know, when they were building the Learjet, came up with the Learjet. Uh, it's, I don't know if it was the Canada government or the government here in the United States, but I think it was Canada somewhere, where they had a contract. They were going to, you know, settle on a contract. But they wanted they wanted some test uh, jets. And, uh, and so they gave them until the last of the year, 31, 31st, you know, 31st or 12 o'clock. You know, you know how lawyers write stuff up. But I believe they gave them... Uh, uh, December the 31st uh, at 12 o'clock. You know, at at, at 12.01 is it's the new year. January. Okay? And and they was trying to meet the deadline. The, you know, every time they test, 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 it failed. They test, 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 test. Literally, it failed. And, uh, and come to find out, they was up under the gun last minute last couple of, you know, hours, you know, and they, they ran this last test and it failed. <coughs> and uh, so, guess what? Don't look like they're going to get the contract. But they went back and looked at the paperwork, and the paperwork said December the 32nd. <laughs> wow. We know it ain't no 31 days in December. They had to honor the contract. They couldn't go back and say, we meant December 31st is really January 1st. No, no. December 32nd. I mean, December 32nd is really January 1st. They couldn't back, go back and read. There was no, 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 no. That whole day gave them that opportunity to test and pass with flying colors. I'm telling you how God works in our faith. You know, uh, uh, I'm done. I'm actually done. Uh, number four, uh, it fights the good fight of faith. What's the good fight of faith? Jesus demonstrated that. It says, when he stood before Pilate, uh, he, he didn't say a word. He only said what he needed to say. When they say, who gave you this power? And so he said, this power is not from you. My father gave you this power. Now, he did say that there. And and and, and uh, but but the scripture said he would uh, I don't exactly know what where it is, but it said they witnessed a good confession even before Pilate Jesus. Come on, they witnessed a good confession. Look what his confession it was. Uh, I lay my life down. No one is gonna take my life. <laughs> so when it came time for him to die, they couldn't take his life. They tried, but they couldn't. He laid his life down. That's a good confession. <coughs> so, so watch this. Five things a good confession does. It thanks and praise God. Now, the good confession would be meditating to interweaving in that. I'm not going to get into it, but interweaving in that. So, the fourth one is fight the good fight of faith. It never lets go. If it lets go, it's not faith. You see how long I've been standing for my, my jet? Gulf stream, Gulf, Gulf stream or whichever, Learjet, whatever. You know, the, 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 the finest one. Say, Pastor, you got to pick one now. Come on. <laughs> it's going to be a nice jet. You know, bust me if you want to. I'm getting ready to go out there to Wilson 
and, and look at something, look at the inside so I can get a good picture mm -hmm. of seeing myself in it. Yeah. Hang around out there at Wilson Airport for, for two or three days, mm -hmm. at least a month, you know, every month go out there for a day. Mm -hmm. just, and if they let me out there, I'm going to look at some of them gyms. Of this generation, I'm going. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you, if God has laid something on your heart, you better get busy doing it. Yeah. You might not have it, and if you think you got to have help, Doing what God called you to do, and this is when you start off. I'm telling you, you you, you got to admit you you really missed it. A lot of times when you start off, you start off by yourself. You may not have no help, and if you get help, fine. But but if you got to have help to do what God told you to do, something wrong. Now I, now I'm saying to fulfill God's will, plan, and purpose, you need people. But I'm saying initially when you start off, is you and God. It's not a group. And so, uh, it never let go. So if I let go of what God told me to have a plan and go all over the United States and other parts of the world, I don't care how difficult, I don't care how dark and gloomy it looked, you know, my, 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 my right now, it's not faith. Faith sees through the storm, sees beyond the storm, like the eagle flies and it looks beyond the storm. <laughs> it looks down at the storm. <laughs> storm happening and he's flying over this is cool, calm, and collective. Birds of a feather flock together and they run for cover. Eagles fly alone. Okay. Um, five things a good confession does. Number one, it sets the law of faith in motion. Number two, I, I give you time to write it. Five things a good confession does. It sets the law of faith in motion. Number two, it renews the mind. The mind has to be renewed. That's part of your soulless man. And this part of your soulless man is your, your mind, your will, your imagination, your emotion, and your intellect. Those things have to be renewed. And you take a person that's been nine, <coughs> four, five years, six years, seven years in college, they train in their intellect. Well, your spirit man can be trained but it, but it has to be trained by the Word of God. Mm -hmm. okay? it, it has to be sharpened and trained and, 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 and uh, uh, educated through scriptures, <coughs> through scriptural truth. Because it's renewed day by day. But it has to be trained, educated, and sharpened by the Word of God. Okay? All right. And that's what the Spirit of God was. In, 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 okay? So, uh, number two is it renews the mind. And renewing of the mind is the discipline training of the will. Enforce obedience to get a, a to get a different outcome. Okay, uh, it keeps the answer before you. And see, that's very necessary. If you plan on walking in, in any note of victory around here, you must keep the answer before you. And if you don't learn how to keep the answer before you, other stuff will come up before you. And it ain't going to be the answer to your problem. And it looks like you missed it. Don't look like you're you know, you wasting your time. You're missing it. This is just, ah, just dull and boring. Nah, 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 nah. You, you're going to run up on this. But it keep, the answer, keep the answer before you. Number two, good confession. Keep the answer before you. It changed the productivity of the heart. What the heart would have produced, it changes. The heart will produce what you feed on. If it's light, that's all you're going to have in your life. Light. Okay? That's all you feed on. Whatever you feed on, that's what your heart is going to produce. Your spirit, man. If it's fear and dread, if it's always arguing and, and keeping up, uh, what is it called? Division. You feed on division. You feed on, say this, you, you feed on a lot of stuff that's on TV. I guess, I don't know, MTV or, or whatever they call it. It's another one that they they, they, they call it. You know, this there's like 30 folks in the room. And they're talking about what the latest stuff that's going on in, the, in, in, in Hollywood and all that. <coughs> and in the oh. sports scene. And then, you know, they and they get various ones that come in. TMZ. TMZ. <coughs> you feed on that stuff, I'm telling you, you could be... And you feed on the, I mean, that's y'all, you say, 
the, the, the housewife of Atlanta and stuff like that, you know. That, that's too much drama in that stuff. You don't need to get involved in that stuff. You don't need to listen to it. That stuff will, 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 will root the Word of God out of your life. And you, you, become, you become improductive. You know, what's a better word? Unproductive. Okay. And then you wonder why, why my life ain't this, you know. Why, you know, life doesn't stand because you're getting involved with too much. Okay. Uh, it changed productivity of the heart. It gets the angels involved. And I taught you all that. I mean, I taught you. I showed you that. But bless you as angels that excel in strength. Psalm 103 and 20. And the angels were sitting around waiting on you to say something. That's worthwhile. So they can get involved in your affairs. Mm. And if you don't give them no command, they can't do nothing. Wow. Well. Why don't she say something? <laughs> really? Bless you as angels that excel in strength, hearkening, listening to the voice of your words. Wow. They ready to do something, but if you ain't saying nothing, they ain't got nothing to do. And then Hebrews says this, and not all of them ministering spirits sent forth to minister unto them that shall be the heirs of salvation. We are heirs of salvation. So the angels get involved in our affairs. Mm -hmm. Causing things to work and function for us that we don't even, can't even see in the spirit world. You give them an assignment. And they'll carry Now, don't get me wrong. They cannot take the place of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. They'll never take the place. But they have their ministry on this earth. So angels are going away with God. Use them you know, for the children of Israel. He don't use them. You know, I don't know. Okay. Sons, so you go up in the east, come, come up in the east, go down to the west. I'm not, I'm not getting into all that. I'm not, I'm not. So when, when people use that term and all, that these things are cease. No. Scripturally, they are not. The angels are still real and they do ministry. I could not be in two places at one time. And I was in Arkansas, and the lady said, I came in the room and laid my hands on her stomach, and the tumor dissolved. Mm. Cancer. Tumor dissolved. She got up out of that hospital and went home. And when she decided to go home and be with the Lord, she went home and be with the Lord. But she didn't go while she was in the hospital. Because <laughs> the, the cancer dissolved. Her stomach went down. And she called my mama and told her that I came to her room. And mama called me and said, Why come you didn't come out of the house? I said, Huh? Why you didn't come by the house? She, Miss Ned Roof just called and said you came in her room. You came to the hospital. You was in her room. You laid your hands on her stomach and the tumor went down. I said, Mom, I'm at work. She said, you at work? I said, yeah. Your angel looked just like you came. Your angel looked just like you are. And your angel looked just like you, Miss Talib. You think your God and angel look like him? No, your God and angel look like you. Now, it's not spooky and getting you all into the, the demonic stuff. No, uh-uh. And it's not a familiar spirit. It's God and your angel. God has assigned angels unto you to watch over you and protect you in all your ways. You just make sure you lined up with God. Father, we thank you today. We bless you and praise you and honor you. We are in Jesus' name. God, if we go into the next area of the next realm or the next phase. We thank you for how you're blessing us, how mm -hmm. you're doing what you want to do through us in this place. We thank you for each person that's collectively doing what you ask them to do and the things that you lay on the heart. We, God, we appreciate them for what they do. Thank you for Elisha and Kayla and, and uh, Talita and, and uh, Jacob and others, Father. In Jesus' name, just helping you. And we Praise you and honor you for you will continue to cause them to, to, to walk in the blessing. The blessing will continue to harbor over and the rest of the rule in their lives in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. As we begin to move forward in the next phases of the things that you want to do, we thank you for our property. We thank you for our buildings, our, our property and buildings and the things that you're going to put into our hands in Jesus' name. We ask a tremendous blessing on your people. Continue to exhort them and raise them up in Jesus' name as we teach your word, Father, in Jesus' name. 
and the other people that we're in covenant with, Father. Continue to bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.